I'm Robert Bruce Thompson and this is the Home Scientist video series. Before I get started, I want to thank my friend Kip K for creating the new video intro. In this segment, we'll take a look at another aspect of forensic toxicology using Dragendorf reagent to detect alkaloids. Dragendorf reagent was widely used in the past and is still used today as a screening reagent for alkaloids, particularly for visualizing TLC or thin layer chromatography plates. It's quite sensitive, yielding positive results with many alkaloids at concentrations as low as a few parts per million. It's very specific in the sense that it yields a positive test with most alkaloids, but reacts with very few non-alkaloids. It's a screening test rather than a confirmatory test because it cannot be used to identify the specific alkaloid present. Once the presence of an alkaloid is established, other tests are used to identify the specific alkaloid. Dragendorf reagent is a solution of bismuth subnitrate and potassium iodide. If you don't happen to have any bismuth subnitrate around the lab, you can substitute ordinary Pepto-Bismol tablets. There are complete instructions in the sidebar for making up Dragendorf reagent by either method. We'll test for the presence of an alkaloid called quinine, which is present in tonic water. U.S. law limits quinine in tonic water to 83 milligrams per liter, or 83 parts per million, so we'll be using a relatively dilute alkaloid solution as our starting point. You can also test alkaloids from other sources, such as the opium alkaloids present in poppy seeds, or the various alkaloids present in many plants. Alkaloids are organic bases that are generally extremely insoluble in water, but you can treat solid plant matter with dilute hydrochloric acid to extract any alkaloids present as water-soluble alkaloid hydrochlorides. If you do such extractions, be extraordinarily careful and wear full protective gear. Many alkaloids are incredibly toxic. For example, although monkshood is often grown as an ornamental plant, just one monkshood plant may contain enough aconitine to kill a hundred or more people. Okay, here is the Dragendorf reagent I'll be using. It's uh, made up with bismuth subnitrate rather than Pepto-Bismol tablets, but I did verify that the solution made up with Pepto-Bismol tablets in fact works. It's not quite the uh, clear golden color of the actual stuff, it's more a yellow-brown color, but it indeed does work as expected. I started by making a serial dilution. The test tube here on the right contains uh, undiluted tonic water, um, approximately 80 milligrams per liter, or 80 parts per million. And then I did a serial dilution by doubling or halving, rather, so that we have a test tube with 80 parts per million quinine, 40 parts per million quinine, 20 parts per million, 10 parts per million, 5 parts per million, and finally a test tube filled with uh, 10 milliliters of ordinary distilled water. So, let's get started. We'll start on the high end to see what kind of result we get. I'm going to add one milliliter of the Dragendorf reagent to each of these test tubes. Okay, I've added one milliliter of the Dragendorf reagent to the far right test tube, the one with the most concentrated quinine solution at 80 parts per million. And as you can see, uh, or you may be able to see on the video, we have a rather opaque precipitate of a very pretty reddish brownish orange color. So I'm going to add one milliliter to the next test tube. Okay, and we can see the precipitate actually forming. So at 40 milligrams per liter we get a very rapid and opaque precipitate. Let's move down and add one milliliter of Dragendorf reagent to the tube that contains 20 milligrams per liter of quinine. And I don't know if it's visible on the video, but we're getting a distinct precipitate. Alright, let's add one milliliter of Dragendorf reagent to the tube 
with 10 milligrams per liter and we can see the golden yellow color of the uh, Dragon Dorse reagent itself but there's no immediately obvious precipitate. So we'll allow that to develop for a few minutes and in the meantime we'll add one mil milliliter of Dragon Dorse reagent to the tube at five parts per million quinine and once again we see no evidence of a precipitate. I don't know if it's visible on the video or not, but the uh, uh, second tube from the left, the 5 part per million tube, has a slightly more golden and less red color than the 10 part per million tube. Although the 10 part per million tube really isn't showing any sign of a precipitate as yet. And finally, of course, we have our control tube, which has 10 milliliters of plain water in it. So, we'll add 1 milliliter of Dragendorf reagent for a reference. All right, it's now been a couple of minutes and we'll check the status of our various dilutions. At 80 milligrams per liter of quinine, the Dragendorf reagent is showing an intense precipitate. Uh, I don't know if it's visible on the video, but I can just see some of it starting to settle out on the bottom of the test tube. At 40 milligrams per liter, the tube appears very similar. 40 milligrams per liter of uh, quinine causes an intense precipitate, which hasn't really started to flocculate yet. It's still sitting suspended in the tube with just what looks like a few grains of precipitate has settled to the bottom of the tube. At 20 milligrams per liter, the tube is opaque. Just looking, I can just very slightly see some detail through the tube, but it's generally opaque. So we have a significant precipitate occurring here at 20 milligrams per liter of quinine. At 10, the tube appears mostly clear with just some cloudiness. Not an obvious precipitate, just a, a cloudy appearance. And at 5 milligrams per liter of quinine, uh, there is no cloudiness even in the tube. However, the color is significantly different. I don't know if it's noticeable in the video from this tube at 10, 10 milligrams per liter of quinine. And also, when we compare it to our control test tube, which has just water in it, we can see that the uh, water solution with a milliliter of Dragon Dorse reagent in it is a golden yellow color, whereas even at five parts per million quinine, um, there is a definite positive here. The color of the solution is changed to an orangish yellow rather than the golden yellow of the diluted Dragon Dorse reagent. So at this point, we can say that at five parts per million of quinine, Dragon Dorse reagent shows a positive test. This has been just a quick demonstration of alkaloid testing using one of many precipitation reagents with only one alkaloid. In later videos, we'll look at identifying specific alkaloids using several methods, including crystallization tests and color spot tests like those we used for presumptive drug testing. Please subscribe, rate, and comment.